guys, we out here in the country. <laughs> yeah, these are my stomper grounds, baby. Today I wanted to talk about why you should do research before you pull the trigger on that motorcycle that you want. Because I see a lot of guys out there that just buy a bike for its looks. You know, without, uh, they don't look at any other aspect to the bike, just the looks. Now, I, you know, they want a Ducati because it's, it looks hot. You know, it's, 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 uh, it's like the Mercedes Benz of, uh, of sport bikes. Or should I say the Rolls Royce of sport bikes. And that just appeals to them. And it's just, they want the bike. They don't know how comfortable the bike is. They don't know the reliability on the bike. They don't know, realize how uh, the cost of the parts, you know, uh, dealer availability. You have to take all these things into consideration before you buy a bike, you know. And also because first and foremost is you want a pleasurable riding experience. That should be numero uno on your list, not looks. Looks is very important, that's fine. But you want a bike that you, you're going to be comfortable on, you're going to enjoy riding on the streets. Because 90, probably 99% of you guys that are watching this video are probably going to be riding, getting a motorcycle for the streets. because. As I stated before, the track is a very expensive endeavor, a very expensive hobby. You know, it costs anywhere from $150, $200 at minimum for a couple of hours on the track. You know, and that's a group rate on a weekend. So, you know, that's over, you know, eight, up to $800 to $1,000 a month you're spending on just track fees alone. And I don't know too many people that have that kind of extra money. You know, just be doing a couple hours on the weekend on the track, on their bike. You know, most people that ride on the track is probably just uh, maybe a handful of times a year. And also, you have to factor in the, the added maintenance you have to do on your bike if you hit the track. But getting back to what I was talking about, you want a bike that you're going to have fun on. You're going to, you want to make sure that you're riding your bike and you're not fixing your bike. I mean, you have to take all these aspects to the bike into consideration before you pull the trigger on a bike. You know, I see far too many guys, they just, I see a lot of people that leave comments and they say, oh man, they're gonna, they want the R6. Yeah, I mean, it's hot. Yeah, the bike is hot. Yeah, man. But did you know that bike is primarily, is better suited, best suited for the track and not the street? You know? The bike, it, uh, it has an aggressive riding position, you know, so you're going to be having the extra, you know, um, stress on your, your wrists and your hands, uh, you know, unless you, you know, keep your body upright, you know, pinching the tank with your, with your knees, your legs, but, and, and you can make the R6 more comfortable for the streets. You can add a... Uh, a better seat you can put heli bars on the bike you know you can put adjustable rear sets on the bike I mean there's a lot of things you can do to the bike to make it more comfortable but you know that's gonna be at least another five hundred dollars or so in cost or more you know so you have to take these things into consideration um, what you want to be doing is you want to be checking out the forums on the different bikes. You know, asking guys on there that own the bike. You know, what's the pros and cons of the bike? You know, research it. Do the use a search engine on the forums and see the pros and cons on the bike. See what what uh, you know. Also, you want to check here on YouTube. Check, uh, you know, email some of these motor vloggers on here. Ask them, hey man, how do you feel about the bike? Like, what problems have you experienced? You know, uh, so you want to take that. That's it. Also, contact your local dealers and ask them. Uh, you know, say if there's a couple of bikes, say it's between the CBR 600 R and a Jigzer. You know, ask them which bike you see the most in the shop for recall work and repair work. That's how I was able to find out that the Jigzers 
aren't as reliable as I thought they were. They're, they have the 2007 through 2010 have uh, elect electrical issues uh, such as the rectifier, O2 sensor, other problems. And uh, the dealers told me they were in the shop more than any other bike. So definitely check you do your research man find out you know uh, is a super sport even best suited for you you may not even want I mean if you have uh, back issues some of the uh, the bikes may be hard on you know the the super sport is you're, you're in a little bit more forward position especially on a you know a super sport you're in a more forward position and a lot of the super except for the CBR 600 RR a lot of the bikes, super sport bikes, have lower handlebars. Their bars are lower, so it places a lot of uh, your body weight onto your wrists and hands. And uh, so that's something to take into consideration. You know, like I said, if you want a comfortable super sport for the streets, this is about this CBR 600, the 2007 and newer CBR 600 RR. Is, is as close to perfection for a super sport bike as far as comfort for the streets as you're ever going to find. Stock, that is. Like I said, you can alter the other super sports that aren't so comfortable on the streets and make them more comfortable, like I said. But at a premium cost, of course. But what you want to do is you want to... Uh, and also, you want to make sure that you're checking the, you know, if you find a particular bike that you like, say you, you know, you found whatever bike that you want and off of Craigslist, make sure you get a VIN number and you do a full check on that bike to make sure that it's, first off, that it has a, a clean title. That's first and foremost that you want to be looking for. You know, you want to look at, uh, you want to try to find out any the crash history on the bike. You want to, uh... You want to be checking the, uh, have the bike looked at by a mechanic. You know, have them, uh, it's, it, if it costs, you know, you could take it to a local dealer if you don't know a mechanic yourself. And, uh, and they'll charge anywhere from like, uh, I don't know, like 50 to $70 to do a full rundown on the bike. And it'll be worth it. Believe me, man, that'll be probably the best Sixty or seventy dollars you'll spend because you'll know exactly, especially when you're buying, uh, you know, you're buying a pre-owned bike. You want to know exactly what's going on with that bike, one hundred percent. You know, if anything needs to be fixed on it, you need to know because it could pose a safety issue. You want to have the, uh, and if there's anything that needs to be fixed on the bike, you can use that as a negotiating tool to to lower the cost of the bike or have them fix it. You know, you want to make sure that you're getting a safe bike, a good bike. You know, you're spending hard-earned money on this bike. So, and you might want to check out my video on some buying tips because I, I give a full rundown on how to get the best deal on a good bike. So, check that out. I'll put the link in this video. But, uh, yeah, do the research, guys. Don't just buy a bike for its looks, you know. Do the research. Make sure you're getting a good, reliable bike. And one very important factor that you need to know is that, at least for me, in my opinion, on the streets, you want a bike that has a that has a steering damper on the bike. You know, like this bike has a built-in, an awesome, should I say, awesome electronic steering damper right underneath the tank cover here so you don't have to put one of those ugly Olin bar you know steering dampers on your bike it's built in and man it this bike runs as smooth as butter at all speeds this bike is smoother than the the 2011 CBR 250R that I had and uh, I mean sometimes just I mean this bike feels like a Cadillac <laughs> I mean, it's just as smooth as butter, man, and it's it's also firm enough, you know, and not too soft on the roads. But you know, I can go on and on about this uh, this 2008 600 R bike that I have, you know. But I'll tell you, 
just uh, make sure you guys you know I want to make sure you guys get a bike that you you want to enjoy riding you know because I see so many bikes like at the dealership that just have like seven or eight hundred miles on them it's like how the hell does somebody get a bike and put 700, 800 miles on it and then they, they don't want it anymore? I don't know. It could be for various reasons or whatnot. But, you know, a lot of times people just, a, a super sport bike is not for them. So you want to, and a good thing is take the MSF class. Like when you're getting your license, if you want to get your, your motorcycle endorsement, because the MSF class, a lot of times they'll have a variety of bikes that you can you can try so that way you'll know which bike is best suited for you you know I didn't take the MSF class you know I, it would have I really should have taken the MSF class you know because that but I know this bike is for me I love this bike I love everything about this bike man it I get giddy every time I get on this bike it's absolutely 100% an enjoyable experience for me. I love it. But for those of you guys that, that really have not ridden any other bikes at all, you know, you definitely want to take that MSF class and, uh, and that way to make sure you know exactly what kind of bike you want to ride. And do that research and find out which bike you want to buy, you know. Because uh, all of them have their pros and cons. Um, but like I said, this CBR 600RR, I, I can't find any cons at all. But, and also that goes for any performance parts that you put on your bike. You want to do research. You want to make sure that, uh, you know, not all slip-ons are created equal, you know. Some of them produce different sounds. So you want to make sure that you're checking on YouTube and listening to people rev, you know, some of their bikes with the particular exhaust that you're looking for, the slip-on. And also, do you really want to put a full exhaust on your bike? Or do you, you know, in my opinion, a full exhaust with the, uh, the power commander, to me, is it's a waste of money for me, to me, on the streets. I mean, you're really not going to gain that much more performance, and you're going to spend a fortune. I was going to cost you what, probably what, like a thousand dollars for full exhaust and the power commander. You know, as where a slip-on is really, in my opinion, is all you need. You know, I I just really enjoy the sound. I'm not looking to gain an extra, you know, ten horsepower. I'm not going to pay a thousand dollars for an extra ten horsepower. That's bullshit. A waste of money. You know, I just love the sound of it. You know, that's why I have the, I have, I just have the two brothers uh, Black Series slip on. I'll have the Power Commander and all that shit. Now, from my understanding, if you get a slip on without a Power Commander, it can run a little bit more rich. But uh, I don't know. I haven't seen any problems at all. And from what I hear on the forums, they say you don't need a power commander with the slip-on. And uh, like I said, I'm getting good fuel efficiency on my bike. You know, I just, uh, I just, my last tank, I got 46 miles per gallon. So, that's why I said, you know, I have another video out there where I said, you know, that don't go overboard with the uh, performance modifications because that shit adds up and you're really, what are you gaining? You're not gaining that much, you know? So, I don't know what's going on up here, man. Was there a fugitive on the loose or something? We got a cop here blocking the road. That's all I really want to talk about. You know, I don't really have anything else to discuss. But I just, I get a lot of comments from, from guys that are just like, Man, yeah, I want the R6. It's hot, man. It's a hot bike. And then uh, then when they get their bike, you know, they're complaining about how uh, it's it, it sucks on long trips. You know, so. Hey, guys. Until next time!
catch you guys later.